Good morning, everybody. It's Jeremy Martin from Cinco Medicos, and today I want to talk about uh, life after plant medicine or psychedelic experiences and how to integrate these lessons into your life. So uh, how do we make the most out of a plant medicine experience? How do we enhance the wisdom and the healing that we've received? And uh, if we need guidance, where do we go? So say it's the morning after your ceremony. I just had ceremony yesterday, so this is a perfect example. I'll just use myself as a case study. And uh, so what, what am I doing today? You know, what is uh, my modus operandi? Um, and if you're at a retreat or you just had a session with a psychedelic therapist, maybe you're in the jungle or the Andes, uh the the basic point is the the real work begins now um you know life is the ceremony cheesy as it sounds <laughs> um but you know first maybe we should define what integration actually is to me it's just the guidance and support that an individual needs after a ceremony or profound experience and or the process that someone goes through in order to make sense and meaning out of that experience, whether that's um, altering their life by changing habits, healing the body, tending to emotions and thoughts, uh, returning to everyday ordinary life. Um, all of this is integration. It's uh, taking the parts that we want in our life keeping them and then doing away with the parts of ourself that we don't want and by doing so we become more whole we uh, approach life from a point of health and well-being rather than brokenness or fracturedness or whatever and uh, integration can vary widely from person to person is there's no manual uh, or step-by-step -step guide. Um, although there are best practices for integration. And so if you're working with a coach or you're working with a therapist and they say that integration should be like this, I might raise a couple eyebrows, but if it's a best practice, then you know maybe it's a good idea to be a little receptive. And so here I'm just sharing some best practices. Uh, one best practice is to just take your time like today, you know, yesterday was a pretty intense day and So today I'm just going to give myself time to think and reflect about the experience uh, I did some breath work in the morning. I did some very gentle restorative yoga after that I'm gonna have some breakfast after this and just spend some time in nature, maybe do a little bit of journaling. I'm not going to overburden myself with lots to do. And, uh, you know, in the past, I have watched both myself and guests or participants at retreats that I've been an attendee and a facilitator for. I've seen people overburden themselves, whether gradually or very quickly because they feel so good that they want to just take on the world. And while that may feel good, uh, perhaps we may not be actually ready for it. And what we want may not be what we need. So for this reason, I advise people as a best practice that it's good to just take your time um, returning to everyday life and letting the experience unfold naturally, slowly, uh, just like with nature, nothing ever rushes, but everything is accomplished. And so, you know, if before the experience, whether that's a retreat or some kind of altered state of consciousness, um, you were this one kind of person and you had these negative thought patterns or way of seeing the world, and now you have this new way of seeing the world, it's going to take some time to integrate that new perspective into the world uh, because you've changed a lot, but maybe the world hasn't changed as much. And so it can be tough to kind of 
weave yourself back into the fabric of that old reality with your new self. Um, and sometimes this can take days, weeks, months, and even years. Um, so it's good to be patient with the process to know how uh, you want to apply the insights of your experience to become someone new. Um, and so you may at first be unsure which parts of yourself you want to keep. And that may take some, some reckoning and some guidance from a therapist or integration coach. Um, and just talking through that. And maybe it's just sharing something like, man, this was an awesome experience. I just want somebody to hear that, uh, to feel validated, to feel seen and heard. Um, and just through vocalizing it, you can feel like <clears throat> you're enhancing the experience rather than losing and gradually eroding the experience, which often happens. And the thing is we, we got gifts from the experience, from the plants or whatever you are working with. So the key is not to just let those gifts go to seed. We want to enhance them. We want to water them and, and grow them over time. So that's why this work can, can make us feel whole again. But it is work, it's, it's active work. Just like if I stop doing my yoga practice, the benefits are going to slowly wither. Um, and as I was alluding to before, integration is not a one and done thing. It is actually a lifelong process. And so we can take a little bit of the pressure off of ourselves, you know, that we need to get integrated. No, it's like, this is going to take time for a lifetime. And, and the longer you work with plant medicines, the more the context and meaning of your experiences continue to build and shift over time. So ultimately we're trying to make meaning out of our experiences so that we can make meaningful change, lasting change in our lives. And if you want to make something meaningful that lasts, that's going to take time. Um, but getting back to, to interpreting our experiences, interpreting your experiences that that's going to unfold as you yourself change. You may, might have a, a ceremony experience thinking that it means this one thing in particular at the time, then two years down the road, it has a totally different or deeper meaning based on who you are then at that point. Um, because, you know, a lot of the plants and fungi that we use are themselves very adaptive beings. And as we consume them, we become more like them. Biologically speaking, if we're in the jungle, for example, and a hole in the canopy opens up, the plants are going to adapt to fill that hole. And likewise, if something changes in our life, we need to adapt and change just like the plants do. And <clears throat> so in my experience, it's best not to attach absolute meaning um, or permanent meaning right after the experience and say, this is the way it is, you know, and sometimes an insight is just for that moment and may become totally irrelevant later. Other times we may have no idea how to interpret what's happened to us. Like yesterday, I had some insights and I'm just plain not sure what to make of them. And that's okay. I'm going to just let that be I know and I have faith, I trust that it will make sense with time. Um, and it's not a real rational process, like our, our rational, logical, Western male mind wants to think through things and solve things logically. Um, but this is more an emotional, uh, a psychological, a physical, and spiritual, however you want to define that term, process that we go through. And so if we look at it through that lens, we can't just have the answers. You're deepening a relationship both with the plant and with yourself. And that's the, the engine for, for real lasting healing. Um, and so, and so, 
for that reason, it's wise to not just make time, but to allot space for that. Right now I have the house to myself, I have the day um, to do whatever I want. I didn't just schedule my, my day chock full of stuff. And, and so that was very intentional, which is why a lot of people say that preparation is the best integration. Uh, I've set myself up for success today. Um, and I've set my environment up so that I can get what I need and, uh, and make the most out of the experience. It's very intentional. Um, now, in terms of the retreat environment, if you're still at the retreat um, or you're just about to leave one, ideally there's, there's sharing circles or integration circles after each ceremony or at least at the end of the retreat. If the retreat center doesn't have that, it doesn't mean it's not professionally run or legit. Uh, all it means is that integration circles can be a really wonderful way to bring even more insight and healing and help us to feel more grounded and held and seen and heard and for us to kind of process with people that we know and trust and who are going through that process themselves. Sometimes these healing integration circles, sharing circles can be pretty intense, um, but it is important if you want and if you feel comfortable to to share your own thoughts, to remember, uh, and, and to get emotional. Um, and the way I run my own sharing circles is that I give people a feather. And so for the time that they're holding the feather, nobody else speaks. It's just the person has the floor. And it's a really great way because nobody's reacting, nobody's judging, people are just there open to whatever the person is going through and the same thing is is given to them um, and uh, and so that helps us to just be aware of what we went through rather than to judge it rather than to um, shame ourselves or or feel guilty for being this way now um, many describe integration circles as a ceremony after ceremony and I totally agree with that. I really like that phrase because they can last as long, they can be as intense and, and be just as effective in the healing process, if not even more. I've sometimes gotten more out of healing circles than I've gotten out of ceremony itself. Um, and that's not always the case, but um, that's just how vital integration can be to our process. Um, so integration can mean a lot of things, socially speaking. Um, it can involve those integration circles. It can also involve one-on-one -on -one coaching with your facilitator at the retreat, with a coach afterwards, with a therapist that you trust. If you are working with a therapist, I would suggest, and you can take this or leave it, I would suggest that um, it's someone that you really trust, that you really feel comfortable around um, because when you share your experience, that experience becomes a story and you want people to validate that, that story, however you're interpreting your own experience. And we want to feel less alone. We want to feel more connected uh, because oftentimes it was disconnection that led us to work with the plants in the first place. Um, and so it's really important, at least for me, to work with someone who knows the medicines that I've worked with um, in my own integration process, <clears throat> because I too have a coach. And um, I know that this person knows where I'm coming from experientially. They've worked with the plant deeply, they've worked with themselves deeply, they've, um, they've worked with the process, both themselves and with other people. And so it's not like I'm going to a therapist and I'm describing ayahuasca or San Pedro or mushrooms and they're like, hmm, you know, what's, what's that like? And I'm trying to explain to them 
what those what those even are and and so just to, I'm trying to be gotten and explain myself which is in some ways trying to justify my experience whereas with a person who already has that experience they're like yeah I, I get it at, at least I, I didn't have your experience but I've had similar experiences and so that can be really useful when we get back to the ordinary world as a best practice to surround ourselves with whether it be mentors or medicine family, people who understand what we're going through, and to be careful who we share these experiences with because folks that just haven't worked with plant medicines, that's not good or bad, it's just that they, they don't understand. And um, it can be one of the most shocking and stressful things that, that can jolt us during the integration process is, you know, sharing this profound transformative insight sometimes completely reality shifting uh we feel destabilized oftentimes um and, and then and then to go to someone and, and be like yeah this is this was what i experienced and they're like huh and, and and we feel just like disconnected from from three-dimensional space and time um and, and in my opinion, we're, we're here to have the human experience. We're not here to avoid the human experience. And um, this is to learn and to grow. Um, so if we're coming back to society, um, another thing to, to be aware of is that we're going to see um, society repeating the same mistakes. Um, we're going to see atrocities and maybe your partner doesn't understand or have any clue what you're going through or went through and um, you may be all love and light at first and then return to a world full of darkness hatred violence anger resentment bitterness shame <laughs> you guys get the point um but that's okay that's that's totally okay um you are stronger now and you may have a completely different view on reality the key is to to allow that reality to become part of of who you are um and see that the the whole external world is just a projection of your internal internal world um, so we always have a choice how to respond to that external world. There may be lying and cheating and trauma in our external world. Now we have a choice, or we've always had a choice, but now we realize that we have a choice and are aware that we're making these choices about how to respond to those things. So how how do you want to respond around toxic behavior? So integration can mean a lot of things. It can mean just walking away from a hurtful conversation or not putting up with someone's emotional abuse. It could mean disengaging from a social setting that just feels off or not for you anymore. Maybe you, you had addiction issues before and you're like, I just, I'm not going to the bar. I'm not going to hang out with these people who are using or just stuck in those old ways. I've changed and, I, and I'm respecting and honoring myself and I'm not putting these people down. I'm just choosing not to fall back into that behavior again. And so it, it's okay if the initial integration period feels really hard. In many ways, it's supposed to be. Um, that's where the growth happens. If it wasn't hard, then how are we growing? How are we pushing our edge? And we don't want to push our edge such that we, we pull a muscle, um, but the amount of patience that you give yourself and the amount of forgiveness you show yourself and others is it really a testament to the medicine that you bring back to the world. The, the plants, again, gave you these enormous gifts and so now it's your turn to enjoy them, to use them, to lean further into them, and to share your own gifts with the world 
when you're ready, in your own time, in your own way. Um, and again, this can be really tough because of how modern society is structured. In traditional indigenous societies, integration is just part of daily life. Messages and, and visions are, are shared openly. Uh, it's just part of their way of life. And group decisions can be based on the, the outcome of an ayahuasca session, for example. But for, for modern drinkers, uh, our, our community, again, may judge plant medicine, not understand it, and we don't have that, that village life, even though we need it probably more. Um, we may lack that close-knit community and context for integration, which is why we need to be proactive about finding an integration counselor or, or mentor a friend that you can just share with um, and, and to connect in, in a safe container. Um, you know, for a while I just joined a, a support group in my local community and people just talked about their, their process and it was great. Um, you know, people, people valued the work and um, when, when it was appropriate, they could give and receive supportive feedback and information or they could just hold space. So, um, let's see, what else do, should we talk about here? Sensitivity uh, is another thing. And another thing to consider with integration is that these visionary medicines can make you a lot more sensitive to your environment than you were before, depending on the medicine. But I found, for example, that ayahuasca really opens us up and we're very sensitive to our environment or after doing a dieta in the jungle. Um, we can be much more emotional, much more psychologically raw and open to, to other energies um, that you may not want to take on. It's like uh, we just got a big car wash and we just we're driving through the mud again, <laughs> you know. So if you're around people's process all the time, holding space for them, not holding space for yourself, if, if you're doing all that stuff, that can be pretty detrimental to your own healing. So when you come back home to the real world of the matrix, it, it, you may be surrounded by these dense and negative energies and like guilt, greed, prejudice, doubt, deception, to name a few. And uh, so let's just pretend that you had a really serious operation. What are you gonna do? You need to take some time to to let that that wound heal so that it's not just an open maw uh, ready to be infected again. So part of the work is how we transmute that sensitivity over time and how we bring the lessons that we've shared back into our life. Um, this can be challenging in that structured, logical, masculine, uh, environment of the Western world, but um, if, if, if we really want to, um, to do integration work, we need to identify, challenge, and revise our outdated belief systems in our own way. And this is what is, is truly empowering about integration. We get to decide. We get to make the choice. We're in control, okay? Just remind yourself of that and feel free to rewind the video if that's helpful. But you can spend a lot of time un unpacking yourself from the box that you were in before during the plant medicine experience. And then when you come back into the real world, you get put back in the box. Do you want to stay out of the box or do you want to go back in the box? It's your choice. Um, you know, for me, being in the box wasn't working. And so... I'm just out of the box now, <laughs> you know, and I like it out of the box. It's harder, but it feels more like me. Um, and that's my own process. So take it or leave it. Um, again, these, these shifts can seem really small, but they're not insignificant. Integration can mean something like shifting from a mindset of, of being a victim or a survivor or something and saying like, I can't do this, or, or, or thinking and feeling that subconsciously, 
and then really believing and feeling that you can do this. You may not know how, but just feeling that you can. And that's a big shift, man. No matter what you're dealing with, you're shifting from being disempowered to being empowered. And that can energize your self-care practice, how you treat yourself and others, how you view your work, the, your relationship with your friends, um, challenges that, that come at you. Uh, plants don't act as a magic pill because the, the challenges keep coming at us after ceremony. It's not like life stops, but what does happen is we're able to surmount those challenges. We're able to see them for what they are and work through them. Um, and so the work may be to recognize um, when you do that, that make those shifts. And um, when we're triggered, for example, you may not have known when you were triggered um, and to just recognize your initial reaction and response, to look at it deeper, to dedicate yourself, really devote yourself to, to changing that behavior, committing bit by bit uh, with lots of compassion. And perhaps your commitment gets shaken and that's okay too. There are, have been times where I've just lost the faith. I've lost the magic. And it's a spiral of uh, healing and growth where we may return to old habits and such, but we're still farther from the center than we were before. And uh, just remember that progress is anything but linear and that effort and expect expectation are not the same thing. Focus on your effort, not on your expectation of what it is you want. Um, you may want things to change faster and be a certain way, <clears throat> but that's just not how progress works, guys. And, and similarly, our intentions are not our goals, you know. An example of a goal would be to move from your apartment into the country, but an intention may be to feel more at peace with our environment and to be more warmly okay wherever we are. Uh, with, a, with a greater sense of presence. And so it's okay to have goals, but let's, let's be very cognizant of what those goals are and how they may differ from our intentions. Um, so since we're getting to a half an hour, I want to thank everybody for watching. And um, if you need a little bit of help during your integration, whether that's trying to derive meaning from your experience, interpret, or just feel like you need a little bit of compassionate support and guidance along the way, I'm here. Um, I also know if I'm not your guy, I know many other people who, who can be there for you and would be happy to refer you to someone um, to, to talk through your process. Um, or just if you want to share the gifts that you've received and, and, uh, and delight and relish um, so that it doesn't feel like such an isolated experience, but a more profound one, one that you're enhancing uh, and getting more out of. So uh, feel free to get in touch with me uh, on my website, synchomedicos.com or synchomedicos at protonmail.com. That's my email. Um, I wish you... All the best on your healing journey and hope this video has been helpful. Take care. Blessings.